Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. And boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to look. You find a way to win or you find a way to lose. So why in the world, maybe you can let me know, right? Why do so many heavyweight fighters want to fight Deontay Wilder? That's my question. I'm trying to understand it. When you hear these guys talk about who they want to fight, all of a sudden, Deontay Wilder's name keeps coming up. Keeps coming up. These guys, uh, these other heavyweight fighters, their management teams, their promoters, even themselves are reaching out to Wilder, reaching out to Wilder's team. Uh, Wilder's team isn't entertaining anything at the moment because they're about to fight Hellenius. But there are a couple of things that, a couple of opportunities for Deontay Wilder. Some big money on the table for Deontay Wilder if he chooses to take on some of these fights. Okay, so first and foremost, he has to get through Hellenius. And in my, in my honest opinion, I think Deontay Wilder really wanted to take that fight for Hellenius to help Hellenius out. I, I, I do. Now, I know what Hellenius has done over the last couple of years, the win streak he's been on, back-to-back -back, uh, wins uh, decisively, K and, KO and uh, Kanaki. And, and that's commendable. I understand about Hellenius, all the different camps he's been in as a sparring partner. I understand his, um, his uh, you know, expanded amateur background, uh, over 200 fights. He has experience. He's seen it all. But Wilder should get through him. It's not an easy fight at all. He should get through him. But outside of Hellenius, the next fight for Deontay Wilder, okay, there's two fights. But one of them, Wilder was mentioning today, is Usyk. Now, for some, some people don't understand, and they don't think Usyk will fight Deontay Wilder. They think Usyk is just using Deontay's Wilder to kind of poke at Tyson Fury for Tyson Fury going after AJ. And, and I'm going to let you guys know this right now. Usyk is an honorable man. He's not going to play games. And at the same time, we have to understand and respect Yusik for not wanting to come back and fight in December, being away from his family for the last however many months. Everything going on in Ukraine. Just remember from fighting the war, losing family and friends, having to leave his family, go and train, come and fight. You think he's going to go into a back-to-back -back training camp? To be away from his family again? No, he, he deserves to go home. He deserves to take time off. He deserves to come back next year. Okay? Now, Tyson Fury respects that. But Tyson Fury, and I think we as a boxing community can agree that Tyson Fury is the big man at the heavyweight division. And he's not going to wait, and he doesn't need to wait for Usyk. Tyson Fury's had all the belts. He's, he's had every belt that there is to be had. So Tyson Fury doesn't care. I think Tyson Fury is looking for a little easier touch with Chisora, but Chisora didn't want to make that fight. So now he's going to an agent. Usyk is looking at that and saying, okay, you want to, you know, bad talk me, a little bit of gamesmanship on your end? Well, all right, how about this? I'll come and fight Wilder. Now, this is the thing about that. I don't see how people are saying Usyk is going to outbox Deontay Wilder every second of every round and just cruise to either a late round knockout or a unanimous decision. People, let, let's, it doesn't matter what disdain, dislike, frustration you have towards Deontay Wilder, right? That's not, that's not, that's not fair to, to say Yusik, who is a much smaller man, not as powerful, who does get winded as well, that this guy is going to be able to come in and just totally embarrass Deontay Wilder over the whole 12 rounds, and Deontay Wilder will never, ever land a punch. He just, he's going to get in there and just look stupid. Come on. All right? So you had Tyson Fury, who's a freak of nature, in there. And Deontay Wilder was able to put that freak of nature down. Now, for those of you out there who say, oh, well, Tyson Fury stands in one spot, he doesn't move around. 
man, just don't start with those excuses, right? Tyson Fury, six foot nine. I don't understand the stone, the pound thing. It's about like 260 pounds. I don't know. I don't know how what that is in stones, right? But he's a beast. Deontay Wilder put that man down a couple times, okay? One shot. You you telling me Deontay you you're telling me Deontay Wilder won't be able to to get a shot off on Usyk? I just I'm telling you Deontay Wilder he will have a tougher fight in my opinion now with Hellenius, with AJ, with a guy like Fury, with uh, Joe Joyce, because of their height and their reach. Even when he fought Brazil, and early in the fight, that first round, I was like, in that first round, Deontay Wilder got caught off of those damn ropes with a hook. He got hurt, he was hurt. He went his ass all the way around to the other corner. And then he, the referee got caught him to break, and then he, boom, he hit him with that, you know, two piece, and got him out of there. But Deontay Water, if Brazil wouldn't have been so careless, he would have been more responsible. People, fight could have been a little bit different. So now we look at Usyk, Tyson Fury. If he really wanted to have the undisputed distinction, I think he would have. There would have been a little more communication between him and Usyk because. It's not a foregone conclusion that Usyk is going to beat Deontay Wilder. But one thing we know for a fact is that um, that lifeline has been extended to Deontay Wilder. And Usyk is going to, uh, my understanding, he's going to be at that fight. And he's going to be, he's, he's going, if Deontay Wilder wins, what they're saying is he may get into the ring and they may announce it. But I know that the talks... The preliminary talks have begun, nothing in depth, because Deontay Wilder wants to focus on Hellenius, but he kind of spilled the beans a bit about his management team, had some conversations with uh, Usyk's team, and he feels very confident that that fight can happen, how Usyk's an honorable man. So, what? now me looking into it, that tells me they've already had some discussions. The fact that Usyk is coming to the fight, that tells me that all Deontay Wilder has to do is the business. And then he comes in there and he clips Usyk. And then, man, talk about turning the boxing world upside down. But outside of Usyk, Eddie Hearn, Shelly Finkel, all these guys over in PBC Showtime, no one likes Eddie Hearn. And I, I could understand it, but it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit unfair to treat Eddie Hearn like that. Man, the man's highly educated. He does a lot for boxing. He does a lot for boxers. You know, I understand he says a lot. But a lot of it is sarcasm, his humor, his witty. He's just, that's, in the Caribbean, we're like that too. The Brit British sense of humor, you know, I think it rubs some people the wrong way. But sometimes Eddie Hearn needs, he does need to kind of throttle back and not be so loquacious, you know. But even Eddie Hearn is out here trying to make fights. He wants to get... Sorrow against Wilder. He wants to get Dillian White against Wilder. He even talked about getting AJ against Wilder. He's looking at Hergovic and Jane and seeing what he can do with those guys, fighting them in-house and getting them over with Wilder. So Wilder, again, his name keeps coming up. So the question is why. I'm going to get to the why in a second, right? Andy Ruiz. We already know the direction this is going. PBC could say, you know what? We're not going to we're not going to worry about the Usyk fight. Put you in there with Ruiz. It could be what they're looking at. And then whoever wins that, which should be Wilder, he becomes a mandatory to Tyson Fury. But Wilder has a say. Remember, he says he's his own boss. If you're Deontay Wilder, who are you going to fight? You're going to go in there and fight Ruiz? Or you're going to go out there and take a shot at the Unified Championships? He's going to go after Houston. But in addition to all those guys, even AJ is, is talking about fighting Wilder. So, so... It makes me ask the question, why in the world do they want to fight Wilder? The one thing, does Wilder have a belt? No, he doesn't have a belt. So why do these guys want to fight Deontay Wilder? Is it because, man, this camera's acting up. Okay, there we go. Is it because Wilder is the cash cow in the heavyweight division? No, he's not the, he's not the cash cow. Okay? The third thing is, um... Is Wilder a big name? 
Wilder is a very big name. Wilder does bring money to the table. He's not the cash cow, but he brings money to the table. If you can get a win against Wilder, it's a huge feather in your cap. The fourth thing is, right? So he's a big name. Okay. But the fourth thing is, do they think Wilder is vulnerable? And the answer is yes. I personally think the main the main reason all these guys want to get at Wilder now is because they think he's vulnerable. I, I suspect that these heavyweight fighters have watched the Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder fight several times and in their minds they've kind of put themselves in Tyson Fury's shoes and imagined them in the ring with Wilder and figured they can do the Wilder what Tyson Fury did to Wilder. You know what? Maybe they can have some kind of success. But the thing is this. Wilder can do to them what he did to Fury. But can they get up? That's the question they need to be asking themselves and not looking at Deontay Wilder and his vulnerabilities. They need to say, okay, I can probably get some shots off on him. I could probably maybe even buzz him. But can I withstand the, 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 the Alabama hammer slammer <laughs> when he lands it? And I just don't think so. Not Anthony Joshua doesn't have the chin to take that shot. Okay? He doesn't have a Tyson Fury ch chin. Uh, Chisora definitely doesn't have the chin. Dillian White definitely don't have the chin. Andy Ruiz, I don't know. I don't know. But Andrew Ruiz, I, I don't think he stands a chance against Deontay Wilder personally. But um, some people, there are a lot of people who think Andy Ruiz, because of his speed, he beats Deontay Wilder. I, I just don't think that. I, I really think Andy Ruiz would just be an Ariola Stavern in there with Deontay Wilder. Wilder knows how to use his reach, and he just basically controlled the distance and just let off that one two. And if Ariola can put Ruiz down, Deontay Wilder kills him. So it is what it is. Okay, and that's just really what we gotta we gotta we gotta look at and, and, and call a spade a spade. Furthermore, this boxing MMA stuff. I'm gonna tell you, in my honest opinion, Deontay Wilder would have success, I think, against AJ. I think he'd have success against Ruiz. And when I, what I mean by success is, I think he beats him against Usyk. I I, I think Deontay Wilder would beat Usyk. I think Deontay Wilder, if he has his stamina together, he beats Usyk. But if not, and he is all over himself and panicking and getting all wide-eyed, you know, he can, he, can, he can get winded and get stopped, man. And not because Usyk knocks him out with one shot or just the fatigue can set in. But, but again, it's a dangerous fight for Usyk. But I, I would still favor Wilder in that fight. But Wilder in a boxing match against Ngannou? I don't know about that one. I, I think the biggest threat to Deontay Wilder is that Francis Ngannou. I'm just being honest with you. That's a that's a different type of, of animal right there. Okay? Even if Deontay Wilder fought F.A. Agjama, a little bit different fight. Frankie Sanchez handle business with, with that job, but he didn't do it standing in there going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The Cuban Flash, smart fighter. But Deontay Wilder against Agjava and Ngannou? Mm. And the reason I'm bringing up Ngannou's name is because Deontay Wilder, he was asked about the potential of fighting Ngannou, and he said, yeah, that's a, there's, a, there's a huge chance that he and Ngannou in the future will be getting it on. And Deontay Wilder and Ngannou are training in the, uh, the same facility right now. So they're kind of, you know, building a relationship and stuff like that, man. So when you look at it, I personally feel, honestly, that a lot of, a lot of these fighters want a piece of Deontay Wilder because they feel that they can do to him what, what Tyson Fury did. And you know what Tyson Fury did... He did what he did in the first fight. He did what he did in the second fight. He did what he did in the third fight. But he didn't. 
It was not easy. It was not easy. And those aren't my words. Those are Tyson Fury's words. Okay? Those are, remember, he said that big knot on the back of his head. He thought he was going to die. He had brain damage from the shots that he was taking from Wilder in that third fight. So Tyson Fury, he, he knows what Wilder brings to the table. Wilder knows what he brings to the table. We're all on the outside looking in. Just like these heavyweight fighters. They're on the outside looking in. But I personally think that Wilder is, you know, it's almost a good thing for him that he can get all these fights now because it's going to be a lot of money and he's going to get some easy wins because people are sitting here underestimating him. It's kind of like Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall. You know, they're underestimating Savannah Marshall, which they shouldn't do, you know. Can't be underestimating opponents, especially a guy like Deontay Wilder. But he did say something about fighting three more years. Deontay Wilder. He's already timelining when he's going to fight, how long he's going to fight for, and he's sorting out his opponents right now. He just has to keep winning. And he already has an idea of who he wants to fight, crossover matches, and he has a lot of stuff going outside of boxing. That's why he's saying, look, a three-year window. And he said a few more fights. So when he said that, that tells me he's looking at maybe three, four, five fights. And that, and that's it over the next three years. It doesn't make sense for Deontay Wilder to fight three times a year anymore. You know what I mean? Now, if he, if he becomes a, the unified heavyweight champion, well, it will be some mandatory. He's going to have to, he's going to, have to fight. Um, probably twice a year. So that would put him at maybe about six fights. And if he keeps winning, then great. But I just think guys need to, you know, put a little bit more respect on Deontay Wilder's name. But I will say this. Maybe they feel he looks vulnerable because of what Tyson Fury did to him. Or maybe they see what I see with this trainer Malik Scott. And I'm not, you know... I'm, I'm not I'm not sold on Malik Scott. I'm not sold on him as a trainer for Deontay Wilder. I'm not sold on him as a trainer for anyone. And it's because he's new. Not at, to boxing. The man been a professional boxer for a long time. But just to this training thing. And I just, I just don't like Wilder coming into a big fight with a guy like Hellenius. And out there trying to throw these hooks. And the way he's throwing it. I don't know if you guys see the videos of how he's throwing the shots. Um, I just don't know. So I'm going to kind of withhold judgment, I, I, but I will go ahead and and push forward and say I, I, I'm i not sure Malik Scott is helping Deontay Wilder because let I always say let a lion be a lion. But I'm, I'm watching Malik Scott and I'm listening to him talk. He's always sounding so philosophical and I'm just... I'm just not sure Deontay Wilder needs a Virgil Hill. What's his name? Virgil Hill, Virgil Hunter? The guy who coached uh, Ward, right? Coach Khan and all them guys. Not sure he needs a Virgil in his ear whispering confusing shit to him. You know what I'm saying? Nobody want to hear about science. You know? I'm just not sure that's what Deontay Wilder needs. I'll tell you what. That, that, uh... Mark Breland, Jay Diaz, no matter how simple their little team was, that was a highly effective team. For those of you who say, oh, no, it wasn't effective, look at what they accomplished. They, they was a highly effective team. Remember, so Deontay Wilder doesn't need to float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He needs to come in there, man, and drop that damn Alabama hammer slammer <laughs> on people. And that's all he needed to do, and that's all he needs to continue to do. But I just think... But the new things he's trying to do, and he said he tried to do that in the fight with Tyson Fury. The jab to the body looked good for 30 seconds. He was putting so much energy and effort behind those shots that he just drained himself. And plus he was in there, man, you know, fumbling around with 315 pounds. Whatever the hell he was doing underneath that weight, man. Come on, Deontay. You know you can't push that weight. So now we're going to see exactly what the, what the game plan is and what the strategy is. He shouldn't have a problem getting Hellenius out of it. He's been down before. He's been knocked out before. But I, I'll say this, because 
Remember, Gerald, Gerald Washington. Deontay Wilder fought Gerald Washington. Gerald Washington fought Hellenius. Hellenius was giving Washington the business. The business. And then Washington came back and, you know, got him out of there. But Washington had to get through some tough moments. Deontay Wilder and Washington... Washington was, you know, out boxing and giving Wilder the business till Deontay Wilder landed the big shot. So we got, we got to, again, you got to look at the dimensions on Hellenius. And you got to look at Wilder and where he was at that moment in time as far as his skill set, his awareness, and his, his, what he saw in the ring, what he felt comfortable trying to execute in regards to letting his hands go. Now he has all this new stuff. We know when he gets in the ring... If he tried to do the new stuff he learned against Tyson Fury, he's going to try to do that with a guy like Hellenius. And that can be detrimental to Deontay Wilder. Because I personally feel he needs to stick and just keep it basic, okay? You don't need to go in there and do all that. And, and, and the reason I say that is because you think about Oscar De La Hoya. Vic Darchinian. I did another video, man, where I mentioned him, right? If you don't know who that is, go ahead and look it up. Little small guy, simple. He just wait. He had that powerful left hand, and that's all he looked to throw. And when he landed, he got you out of there. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with De La Hoya. Miguel Cotto, the left hook. If these guys hit you with it, that's it. Ike Corte, he ain't throwing nothing but a jab. And winning fights. Shutting people down with just a jab. Winky Wright, simple, basic fighter. Kill you with the jab. And these guys didn't try to evolve their styles. They could box, but that they kept it simple. What works, what I do great, that's what I'm going to rely on. And Deontay Wilder, what works, what he does great, that's what he needs to rely on. I'm not so sure that's what the focus is in their camp. I think they're work. I don't think I know for a fact they're working on a lot of new things, a lot of new techniques, and just trying to overall upgrade Deontay Wilder's skill set. And I just don't think it's necessary when you have somebody with that kind of power in their hands. It's like Zab Judah. There's something was something special about his hands, especially that left hand. If you hit you with that straight left or that left uppercut, you're out of there. Okay, so. I'm going to leave it as that. But with Yusik targeting Deontay Wilder, Francis Ngannou targeting Deontay Wilder, Ruiz, AJ, White, Chisora, everybody, Joe Joyce, every, even Parker is talking about getting in the ring with Deontay Wilder if he gets through Joe Joyce. You know? that th These guys are all got their eyes on Wilder. They're looking at people with the belts too, but they, they all, for some reason, are looking at Deontay Wilder. And I just, I really hope that he picks some of these guys to fight. And I, I, I do think the toughest fight he would have would be Ngannou. I just think that guy, that guy is a monster. And, and Yusuf would be a tough fight. But uh, outside of that, I, I don't know. I, I think AJ is a tough fight because AJ is an amazing fighter and he's big. But it's just a matter of who lands first in that fight. But as far as like a really, really tough, frustrating fight for Wilder, where he'll probably be gunshot, I think it's Ngannou, and I think it's Usyk, until Deontay Wilder lines him up. But Ngannou, I think, is the biggest threat out of all these guys. That's just my opinion. And they're looking to make that fight. I don't know what happened with Ngannou and Tyson Fury, man. Tyson Fury says all kind of stuff. I think he knows better than to fight Ngannou in those MMA gloves. Like, that's suicide. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm a fighting man and all this bullshit. And the gypsy, this man. Gypsy man. Gy the gypsy king's not stupid. He's not dumb. He knows not to go fight no damn MMA fight, especially in Ghana with no damn MMA gloves. Not at all. But that being said, man, leave your two cents below. Let me know what you think. I'm glad Deontay Water is back. It's exciting, man. And these potential fights are exciting as well. But my thing is... I express why I feel people want to fight Deontay Wilder. I think it's because he's vulnerable. I don't think it's the money. I think it's the feather in their cap if they beat him. 
And I think because they're watching his trainer and all this new stuff he's doing, and they just feel like this is the the, the, the moment, the time where they need to seize the opportunity and strike when the iron's hot and get him when he's kind of in a transition phase. And what I mean by that is he's kind of going from being the lion to this guy kind of getting him into being this pussycat type boxer. And that's a perfect time to get him because we've seen with boxers who start to learn all this new stuff with these trainers that often they look confused in the damn fight. And I think that is what could happen with Wilder. But at the end of the day, fighters will get in there and, and try new things, right? But when that shit ain't working, what do they end up doing? Going back to who they are. And if you're if you if you're a fighter, if you're a scrapper, that's what you're going to do. And Deontay Wilder, if for some reason he's in there and just floating like a butterfly, tickling coochie coo shit ain't working, Deontay Wilder is going to go back to fighting. He's going to let those shots go. And that's what's going to get him to success. But I could be wrong. Who am I, right? But that being said, like and subscribe. I appreciate your support. Y'all keep cool. As always, I'm in the breeze.